So in this video, you're gonna receive a full masterclass from a pro how to create a simple greening style aquascape that's very easy to maintain, but looks so, so good in any environment. Stick around because it's gonna be full detail and lots and lots of fun as well. <laughs> What's going on with you with the people? Today we're going to be escaping this awesome... Would you class it as a shallow? It is a shallow, isn't it? Categorize as a law. It'll put an L next, so this would be a 90L. You could call it a shallow tank. That's what we're doing. So this tank is a UNS tank. It is quite low. So exact dimensions... Well, I say exact, you know what I mean, roughly. I'll put the exact up on screen, but... Yes, we've got 90 centimeters in length and then 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters. Oh, perfect. Literage? Oh, you won't know. Gallons? Gallons is about 20, 22, something like this. Yeah, 22. Awesome, awesome. And for lighting, we've got the Chahiros Vivid 2. I think Vivid 2, Vivid RGB 2, something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Utterly forgettable naming, but yeah. great light. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got this really, really nice uh, hanging kit, which is most of the time when you see this, it goes all the way across right. and down the other side, doesn't it, Jeff? Yes, this comes from ONF. Uh, oh, it is ONF, right. It's ONF, yeah. It's a very cool product, very adjustable also comes with a 60 centimeter length one in the box uh and I, i'm really liking it actually my first time to use it so obviously we're in the adg gallery aquarium design group jimmy's chilling <laughs> hiding <laughs> <laughs> and uh everything is like it's a completely clean look it's like it's art essentially so you need to have that really really high class finish and that's what we've got here we've got an awesome cabinet is that is that from uh, uns as well this is one of our custom made cabinets you can see it kind of matches the other ones in the yeah. gallery yeah and this is done by one of our uh you know just custom millwork fabricators okay um if i come from the back i mean it is we are designing it to be absolutely viewed from the front yes. but it will be viewed from the back as well the kind of my focus is still going to be this side but yeah i do like to have them you know, have some good impact from the backside as well. The only reason to come around the back is I just wanted to show you some of the awesome work that's been done by Austin for setting up all of this. Look at this, just look at the attention to detail here. Comes right down, but it's still clean even from behind. Mine would be an absolute mess. <laughs> we like to do the this uh, little conduit wrap around the, the uh, electrical cord too, just to, just cleans it up. It is, it does, it does. It looks way better than just a black thing, cheap black know, wire to do, yeah, but it yeah. uh, looks cool. Much better. Um, so right next to you down there, Jeff, let's move on just, just, just yeah. to show the hard scale. We'll get onto the filtration later, but obviously it's not relevant right at the minute. Sure. But down here, we've got this awesome hard scale. Are we using all of this? Uh, yes. Probably not, well, <laughs> as much as we can, for sure. Without it looking yeah. Some of it, you know, it may be a little too big. I don't know about a variety of things, but um, yeah, we've got Manzanita wood. Yes. The famous Manzanita from the famous Tom Bar in Northern California, USA. And uh, this is actually a stone from him too. He calls it uh, Hefe stone. And I have never used it before. So I've never it's seen never it. been shown in the gallery. I've never worked with it, but. It's actually, um, I was saying when Jeff showed me, it's kind of like a reef, like a, a, an old a piece of coral that's sort of sure. uh, bleached, didn't they like call a, it? Like some reef rocks that I've seen before. Um, yeah. And also kind of reminds me of some of the different lace rocks. Okay. Too, so. Uh, but when it gets wet, you'll see some really cool colors come out. Yeah, I could already see this. There's like rainbow effect in some of it. So that's a so little really good. It's quite a bluish color, unexpectedly, okay. when it's wet. So uh, it's cool stuff so far. Okay, well, let's, let's make a start. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you... Are you starting with rocks? Yes. In this case, I am because the pieces I chose are all kind of of this flat, kind of linear, almost slate-like nature. Yeah. So... I feel like these would be hard to integrate into an existing wood structure. So my vision is just something based on some layering. With Jeff's an expert, by the way, guys. But I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just go, going with this video, assuming everyone knows who you are. Let me just walk you around. We've got a full tour of the gallery in the, in the Aquarium Design Group playlist already, if you want to check that out. But just as a quick example, let me show you some of Jeff's work. Yeah, ignore all, the, ignore all this mess because the whole big tank that's been here since the shops, uh, the gallery was built, isn't it? Or, yes. or you, since you moved in, yes. has just come out and there's a whole new amazing project going on here. So just excuse the mess, they've literally just pulled it out. But if we come across, like for instance, 
This is one of Jeff's most recent Iwagumis. It's still growing in, but it still looks absolutely amazing. There's actually gonna be fish added into this one by tomorrow. And yeah, I'll get some shots of that. So this tank here is like really, really simple, but it's actually one of my favorite ones in the gallery. I don't know why, but I just feel like it's something people can achieve. All right, we're not all gonna be able to do it in quite as amazing skill levels as uh, Jeff has, but to some degree, we can all have a go at recreating something like this. And then right next to it is this absolutely awesome, would you even class this as a paludarium? I suppose you do because it's really all coming out. exactly what to call this style. I mean, it's a 120 centimeter shallow model tank. Yeah. Uh, so just trying to lean into the shallow part of it with the all this emergent growth. So cool. Uh, or whatever, I actually call this marginal growth because it yeah. had grown from the water it was planted. And then growing right above. at the about one one inch of water in the back corner there. It's awesome. So this tank behind me here is actually one of my favorite. I really, really love the design of it. But the thing is, I think I'm a little bit biased because you know I love my rainbows and it's a rainbow tank. So yeah, just take a look at this tank. It's still in its infancy. There's going to be a lot of growing going on with all the uh, sort of small epiphyte plants in amongst all of the rock. But the, the thing I'm loving the most, of course, is these rainbows. Look at these. I'm not sure what ones they are. Jeff did say, but I can't remember, but the, the colouring, it's subtle. It's not like it's in your face as a Bosmani or something like that, but they're a good size. They complement all the other fish really well. And yeah, what an absolutely amazing tank. It's uh, 1500, I think, something like that, 1.5 meters. Loving it. I'm loving the uh, really clean open foreground as well. Just works so well. I think it's safe to say that Jeff's a master. But then we've got really, really simple designs like this one as well. This is art, look at this. Not just the skate, but also the fish are complemented so well. We've got tiny little green resporas in it, and it just works really well with the, the plants. This is the Pinto uh, Anubius. So it's like a white leaf Anubius. Very, very rare, very expensive as well. But anyway, it's about this one in there, Jeff, and we are ready to start the skate. Cool. Let's, let's get cracking with this rock. Yeah, for sure. Fairly normal sequencing. I, I do tend to kind of look to the biggest rocks first. Yeah. Especially since I'm seeing kind of a It'd be kind of a stacking vibe going on here. Woody looks cool. This stuff's going to work so well. Yeah, that's very interesting. Look at that. Very interesting. I might just, you know, before I settle on something, I'll give it a few rotations. Yeah. Yes. Because I found it wanted to lean this way. There's kind of this effect yes. here. I might kind of take advantage of that. It's like the overhang sort of yeah. thing. We'll kind of see how that plays it's out. Can we get it still? That one's yeah. a great base, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing kind of a. Maybe it's yes. companion feature here it could be a thing. Do you know what? It's giving me vibes as well of like uh, alien planets, yeah. you know, surface. I can see that. Until we're the alien planets to <laughs> someone else, right? <laughs> That's true. Jeff wasn't quite happy with what he had done. So he just takes it out, tries again. This is the part you can really take your time with because everything's empty and you can just have a go. It's a lot harder to adjust things later on <laughs> when it's all filled up with water and has been fishing it, so. So I'd say this piece has a character that's, it's just, it, see how this is picking up on this, a similar texture. Yeah. And this has a little different texture. So I'm, I might use this as just more of a base piece. And this guy may just kind of be his top hat. Ah, I see. You know, just to bring, just to keep the texture consistent. Yeah. Doesn't make this piece useless. It's got nice features, but. It's almost like you're making it one. And that's giving kind of the vibe, vibe yeah. And it's... It'll give me some lift from some, yeah. you know, otherwise fairly flat. That's great pieces. angle from here, Jeff. Oh, where is it's continuation. Yeah, it's Clearly. already giving us kind of an overhang shadow effect over here. And just right away, it just it just felt better. Again, there's some mirrored texture yeah. between those. And then all the rest of these kind of have that same vibe. So some of you are probably thinking, MD, why aren't you doing this? Well, you don't come to some master aquascapers gallery and as I'm pretty amateur, I'd say, you know, some of my escapes can be really good, but like a lot of stuff I do is lower level. It is so that you guys could take examples, of inspiration from that, and then maybe lead on to doing the more complicated stuff. So I'm here to observe and learn, and I'm documenting it so you guys can as well. So what something I'm seeing here right away is I've got this smaller piece. I'm kind of starting some stacking, but I'm seeing this guy is almost a small version of this rock in terms of its shape. So. Well, one thing that just occurs to me. Do you know what I'm seeing, Jeff? Just trying to give you a peek inside the mind. I don't know. What, what do you got, man? I'm seeing the Millennium Vulcan. Yeah, I've got yet. More than once. <laughs> it's been the spaceship coming in. <laughs> but uh, 
So I don't know. I might kind of yeah. bring it over here in some kind of way just to have a little subtle mirroring kind of vibe just since it's really fundamentally the same shape. Because I think if I had it stacked here, then you've got too much of the same shape over here without it here. And uh, I don't know, just giving you an insight into what goes on in my brain <laughs> to sort out. It's so, it's so hard sometimes to vocalize it, isn't it? It is. Where you're seeing something and it's more, sometimes you know how this is, it's, uh, it's like a feeling. Yeah. And not yeah, yeah. so much a thought. Yeah, yeah. You know. Which is why not everyone can just be pros, you know? <laughs> Somewhat true. You can get it better though, you can. I think so. Just just repetition, isn't it, like most things. And you know, really, it comes down to just access to resources. Yeah, yeah. This is a big message of mine, is that the more we can expand our available, you know, the availability of resources, the more opportunities we have to find those materials that's gonna fulfill our vision. Yeah, definitely. I need more hardscape is basically what you say. You know how it is, man, you can never have enough. Never have enough. Yeah. <laughs> For those you haven't seen, I'm just going to take you out the back, take by the back quick, Jeff, so they can see see the, the hardscape right. <laughs> selection. You can see what happens. When so look, we've got this little gallery, not little, but you know, in terms of, compared to the back area, hang on, hang on. So first of all, we've got the sort of cherry picked uh, hardscape in this area. This is sort of like for the shop, so that people can come and select what they want. But then you come outside to the uh, warehouse area. <laughs> And you've got all of this and then you look up and you're like oh we've got more and then we've got more and then we've got even more and it's absolutely everywhere and then you come over the other side and you've got even more like uh can you imagine owning all of this how cool are these branches though they've they've hung them in this way but it looks like part of a tree like and the way it all flows nicely together okay so jeff has finished he's happy with completely well I'm liking the rock structure. And yeah. so this is a point where I'll commonly go, okay, you know, if I've got to leave this just as a rock scape, uh, I'm liking it. And it, I think it could function very well. Now I do have some wood here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm always just curious, like, is there a way to integrate this wood? I've kind of got yeah. an idea in my head. It may or may not come together. But it's not going to hurt to have a go because you can just take it back out again. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, all right. Cool. So what's the deciding factor here now of where you place that wood? Yeah, I mean, so I've got this, you know, the loose idea is, you know, I'm just looking for some interplay with some of these, you know, just is, is does it work? You know, it's sort of like is my feeling. I, I, is linking it the two, yeah? Yeah, maybe a linking. I think the size of the wood is going to kind of dictate that. Um, yeah, yeah. Because it's going to, given the size, it's going to be one of those that's come right out, surely. If, if like the one you did, it's not in the gallery at the moment, but you did do one I remember seeing before with this absolutely giant piece coming out. Oh, right. Yeah, that actually used to be here uh, some years ago. Right. And, um, you know, and I didn't intend to keep that. Yeah. And I was here late by myself and the staff member uh, was getting back late and rolled through and looked, gave me a funny look and I was like, oh, I'm just playing around. This isn't going to stay. Yeah. And it, 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 it ended did. up, you know, being a permanent installation for quite some time. I thought, wow, is this just too much? But sometimes uh, more is more is my motto. Yeah, it, <laughs> more it is can more. Work. It can work. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to kind of see where things go here. One thing I like about how I have the rocks is there's space for cleaning the glass. Yeah. The way yeah. around <laughs> just enough. I could take my little nano mag and just slip it through there. Yeah, but that's nice when you don't have, you know, things run, rubbing on the glass too much. I like that, Jeff. Do you know why? So it's, that, it it's see. got the arc up. Yeah. When this is all down. Yeah. I like that. It really does connect it in a natural way. So when you've got rocks first and then wood, you know, I find that to be kind of its own sort of unique challenge. You know, obviously putting rocks against a wood structure, it can be more obvious, but when you already have the rocks, I yeah. find that that interplay is way more important because that rock structure is kind of telling you where to place the wood. Yeah. You know, if we don't want to, we don't want it to look like an afterthought, I mean, preferably anyway. Here I'm looking for this kind of this curve here. I'm kind of going, well, that could maybe sit there. Yeah, Not yeah. saying it's going to stay, but that's just something I'm playing with. Yes, yeah, so you'll notice the difference when I do it to Jeff is you're looking at the fine, de real fine details. Like for me, if that happens by accident, great. But Jeff's looking for it. All right. 
looking for more, you know, just more of a relationship. And you know, sometimes you spend a lot of time sitting here going, is there a balance point? Maybe there's not. How will you secure the wood, Jeff? Because I always glue. Yeah, with this, I would glue as well. Yeah, there's no real way around it because right. on the big tanks, you do just put rock on top, don't you? But Though we've got like into gluing those too. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that's not uncommon now. Uh, it used to always just be rocks on top to weight them down, but um, yeah, I mean, it's strangely working. It's working in some kind of way. I like it's it. It's kind of different. I like it. I like it, but I like anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you are far more particular in a positive way about being completely happy. at the Right, and that happiness can come in many forms, though. I'm all about that, actually. I mean, very little of this is like, a, di a distinctive vision. It's more of kind of like a rough draft in my head. And then you're just letting kind of the material tell the story, you yep. know? And like, if you can just learn to kind of follow along with that, oh, not be too go. stuck on an idea in your head. I mean, there's a time for that too. I love yeah. that as well, Jeff, that is wicked. Okay, cool, cool. When you come down from this, and this see, side. It's a little bit of a funny touch point here, but we can just put some plants there to kind of break up that point and it'll look as if it's just part of the wood structure itself, you know, so. Sometimes you're like, I love it except for this one thing, and I'm going, well, can I work with that some other kind of way? In this case, yeah, yeah, I think plants would uh, like a compromise, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So a lot of times, even though I'm working here in the gallery, because I'm trying to do things for customers coming in that they can relate to, I'll intentionally kind of limit the amount of material I'll bring over to the tank, and so uh, in this way, I'm really. I'm sort of forcing myself to find ways to sort of make it work because, you know, chances are you don't have a pile of wood as big as a house, you know, uh, 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 that you've got access to to make your scapes. And so um, I, I too will kind of limit myself and go, you know, using my ex experience and just kind of trying to see it and you know, how can I pull those materials into something that works. Not always going and pulling more and more stuff uh, no. myself. Uh, even though there's an endless supply that I've <laughs> That's right, I could, but there's something sometimes in limiting uh, the access to the materials to really make you extract the most impact from what's there. So Jeff's made some adjustments, um, but wow, look at that spiraling. It looks like fireball moving that way. That's but just cool. explain what you said to me just then, Jeff, about um, adding in some of the, 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 the other pieces to tie it all in. Right, yeah, so I felt like since the two rock structures kind of face one of the, like, so there's a movement here and a movement there that I had been putting all the wood kind of coming this direction. So I found I needed at least one thing also pointing back this way and once once i dropped this little piece in there it just felt a lot better to me as if there was a little balance and you know again you've got this clear direction here and a direction there and uh i wanted the wood to reflect that also so good are you happy with that i'm pretty happy with that to be honest i was struggling a little bit with adding the wood i felt like i got a little too much kind of piled in there at one point trying to make this crazy you know connecting lines yeah thing. And once I pulled some away, I was like, okay, that feels better. And then I could look at just the places that needed those kind of final touches. And um, yeah, that's a, that's a normal process too. Sometimes taken away is how you get there. I'm, I'm, I think it looks amazing. I'm sure the audience will as well. I'm but pretty happy too. There's not a lot of touching. There's one little spot of wood over here, barely touch it. I can work around that. Yeah. Well, you mean for cleaning, yeah? For cleaning the glass. Yeah. Yeah. The practical matter of the long term maintenance. Right? Yeah. <laughs> not everyone just leaves their tanks like me. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then too, I kind of, something I sort of like about it is just a little bit of a different feeling. Uh, you know, it's not just wood pointing up like this or rocks tipped in a certain kind of way, like classic Iwagumi or, hmm. you know, classic uh, driftwood layout. Um, I feel like, I've enjoyed working with this different stone here for the first time because it kind of forced me to make a little structure that I feel like has its own character. Yep. Right, what's the next step? The next step, I suppose, is gluing that down. Yeah, just a few points. It'll go real quick. Sometimes yep. you're like, oh man, I got to glue. It's going to take five hours, <laughs> but it's really not a big deal, man. It goes pretty quick. When I'm scaping, that's always the bit of all of it that I'm like, oh, you don't really get any reward right. visually. It's tedious. It's, it's, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but I find now I can do it pretty fast. It's not yeah, a big yeah. deal. Yeah, I've got a lot better. Back in the day, it was like, 
I didn't know about the tissue technique and things right. like that. And I used it was to, taking a long time to dry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But but now yeah, you can you can get it to fizz and go quick and then right. you're away. Yeah. Well, so Jeff's added little spots of tissue. He's done it so well that I can't even see them. <laughs> um, oh, there's one down there. Yeah. See that tiny, tiny little bit there. Yeah. Just anywhere there's a connection with the rock and the wood, or maybe even two pieces of wood. Just any touch points. Uh, I'm gonna probably go ahead and put a little piece there. And what's that glue you're using, Jeff? Because I've so, never seen that. Yeah. This is uh, pretty cool stuff. It's uh, a black. Super glue. They call it medium thick, which I find to be very, very nice. Not too thin, not too gooey, or you know, not so too gel. It's not going to drip down the rocks. Yeah, and I'll just use the little dropper here to get a few. You know, just a little bit, kind of spread it around. It, it, it comes in a brown also, okay, uh, which is kind of that cool. Could work, yeah, yeah, and I find when it gets wet, it doesn't get that white crusty look. Uh, not nearly as much anyway. So how long does this stuff take to set? Well, you know, I just started a few minutes ago and like this here, it's already pretty much, Oh yeah. you know, it's already it's relatively set. So you, within 15, 20 minutes, you're you're fine. Yep. By the time you're done planting, I think, uh, oh yeah, so for sure it's gonna be dry, so. Awesome. Yeah, cool stuff. So we're just waiting for the glue to dry and I'm, it's pretty much there, but I noticed that uh, Jeff has glued the wood to the glass itself, which is something I've never really done before. And completely forgot that you can do that but that yeah, makes sense doesn't it obviously you're not going to see that glue because the substrate or sorry the sand the decorative sand is going to cover it up right next phase jeff is completely happy everything is locked down it's not going anywhere it's time for the decorative sand sometimes i call it substrate but that would be wrong wouldn't it right right i'm like a cosmetics cosmetic sand yeah yeah because it's so cosmetic right what have you gone for um, I have some of the ADA La Plata. Okay. Um, just neutral. I, I like it. I think it's it's kind of picking up on the rock in a, in a nice way. Yeah. Um, so you don't like to contrast to the rock? I mean, it depends on the... Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I do. Uh, in this case, I'm just I know I'm feeling a certain unity with the rock and the wood. I want to continue it with the sand. Yeah. Okay. So I have rinsed it pretty good. It can be pretty dusty out of the bag. So initially, it's going to kind of mound up, but I'm going to show a little trick here after I get it in to... Uh, you smooth it out even though it's wet. I'm just had a thought, Jeff. We we haven't really explained this style. Sure. So that now is a good chance, uh, yeah. a good opportunity to absolutely because absolutely. the idea with this setup is that it is very simplistic package for people to really have a go at. Right. Am I right in saying that? Absolutely, 100%. There's no active soils in there that's going to swing any pHs or release any ammonia or have yep. loads of time to settle in. It's just good, clean rocks, sand, and wood, and. Uh, it also means the uh, ability to add fish faster as well. Much faster. As Much long faster. as you still need to do your testing and you make sure your water quality is good and you're changing your water as needed. Of course. But it does pretty much mean you can put fishes straight away. I mean, I do anyway, but then I've been doing it for a long time now, so. Sure, and you've got access to some great products to help uh, expedite the cycling of the tank. Exactly, too. shout out to API Quick Start. That's for sure. <laughs> it's a good product and definitely gets things ready for the fish a lot faster. It's my cheat code. Right. I. You know, it, it just works, and so there's no reason to wait if it's ready to go. Yeah, as long as you're not putting in 150. Like, right, I think it's just dark and sick, you know, something. common sense. Yeah, yeah, want exactly. to bomb it with too much right away, but uh, no. But yeah, the you know, and I call it greening because we're not gonna let, when I just think of planting, I think of inserting something into a substrate, a soil, you know, something yeah. like this. And uh, here we're just using all those great epiphytes, Anubias, Booses, ferns, mosses, uh, to green the hardscape. And so, yeah, so uh, we're not going to be planting anything in the sand at all. The sand is purely there to give it a natural bottom. The hardscape is the framework. So this one is actually a prime example, I say, Jeff, yeah? That is 100% green concept. You love it. Full form there. Yeah. How, how, how yeah. long, how long is this, how mature? Uh, only about two months. Two months. So, yeah. It's looking so good. The Ricardia. It's Ricardia, yeah? That is. Yeah. Love that. I don't have any of this. I need to get some. It's. I, I called it a few years ago when it first really came onto the scene. I call it the most important plant in aquascaping, at least for that year. Yeah. Uh, because it's so, like, you can use it like moss, but never gets stringy and out of control. I mean, you yeah. can, I've had it go two years before I really needed to sort of trim it. Or really? It. Uh, it's really, and it takes the glue very well. That's just glued on there. You'll never see the glue on the underside. Right, sold. You've sold. Because I don't use moss because I, 
so fast and like, right. oh, it's just, if it's growing well, that moss is growing out of control so way faster than other things. Especially when I've got like 50 tanks to take care of, like, absolutely. To be able to yes. trim and vacuum moss in every one of those. Just keeping oh. up with the moss alone. Whereas, so Ricardi gives you that moss texture and feel. You get literally, I mean, zero of those undesired moss variables you just described. So I'm just kind of getting it in the big spots here. These are real cheap online. I just get them on Amazon, but uh, these little USB <laughs> motorized I want, to, I want one just for the fun of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm using this thing all day for all kinds of stuff, but now you can see I'm just bringing that sand and it's starting to lay down, go into the little uh, spaces between the rock and the bottom glass. You're using the uh, pressure to push it. So that's it right. Yeah, just kind of shaping it a little bit. And because, you know, I don't want to start scaping with this sand all mounded up like that. And you should, uh, that, that you can change it to be a mist as Absolutely, well, can't you? Absolutely, yeah. And so once I start getting my plants in gear, Look at that. You know, yeah, yeah. So a lot of this brand new technology or anything, but you know, it's, it's still fun. So we can show how the, uh, the rock changes color with the water. So you can see that all those little oh, details yeah, the wood. and the wood, yeah, the wood darkens right. Rich colored. Yeah, it just it just adds a little bit more pop to all those different like areas. Look at that. Look at that blue coming out in some of that rock. Yeah. Too. Yeah, you can't see the blue at all before. Yeah, when mean, it's dry, I didn't even know it had that much blue. No. So what's the next phase then, Jeff? Uh, I'm gonna just start working in some uh, Nubia's non appetite Okay, which is behind us. That one because we've had some good shipments of uh, just really good quality of it. Yep. I see you've got some rocks there. You're doing the whole glue to the rock first. Um, in this case, uh, oh. we used a little bit of ADA wood tight and just attached the rock that way. You could use the glue just yeah. the same. I asked Corey to do it. That's how he chose to do it. So Perfect. fine by me. Yeah, I, yeah. I do tend to use the glue more lately just to be truthful, just because it's uh, it seems easier and I'm being kind of lazy, but. <laughs> That's probably the best way. Oh, both it didn't work. Have, you know, this is the kind of old school yeah, yeah. Uh, Amano way of doing it. Because he didn't like using glue, did he? I don't, you know, really in his day, the glue wasn't hardly even a thing. Oh, right. Um, I think only they were still using it in saltwater tanks. And uh, freshwater plants had hadn't realized, oh, wait a minute, we've got applications for this stuff. So how are you deciding where to go? Yeah, so I'm definitely just looking for initially just kind of some obvious spots. Yeah, this one happened to be kind of kind of long, whereas this one's kind of bunchy. So I'm kind of kind of looking for that yeah, yeah. long space where that one guy could kind of just fill it in there. Yeah, so I guess you need it. It's, it could probably be quite easy just to go over the top, um, but you need bigger areas that, like this. That's a bunching there of three. Sure. Yeah, that's like three kind of work together to. Work. And it's going to give it a, a a more established look. Yeah. On day one, which is always, you know, it's nice. It's cool to have it. You just filled it up, and it already looks like something exactly. that's quite lovely style. But to have varying sizes, I think, is is the key for me when I'm doing it. Anyway, for sure. If yeah. you had it all the matching sizes all over, it would look so artificial. I think. Well, the other textures to bring in will definitely help give a little more. I call it just kind of a tempo, you know, from small to big, and just kind of the way it flows from one end to the other. Other. So we won't just use the Anubias? Um, well, you're not sure yet. My, the other plant I have planned for sure is some uh, Ricardia. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pelia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. Again, for a greening scape, I love it. Yeah. Over mosses most of the time uh, because it's like a really slow growing, you know, it's the it's the epiphyte of mosses, <laughs> if that's even a yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, moving on, we are now cutting the... This is not even a moss, is it? It's, but we call it a moss. We'll we do, moss. Are they, sometimes they call it coral moss. Yeah, that makes sense. It does look kind of like... You're right. So it's on a... Uh, we'll have a look down here, look. It's... Yeah, it's, it's grown... It comes on the mesh there, the steel. And then it's cool because it's grown also onto another... Uh, you can see kind of a fishnet kind of nylon material there. So it stays after you've cut it off, and then I'll just take it, and I'll just cut some shapes. Like so. Cut and shapes. Cut it into little bits, big bits, and you yeah. can see now I got nice, clean, even the small ones, and it's got a natural underside for a little dab of glue, and it's just gonna go right where I put it. You're not gonna see the glue getting crusty underneath. I need to get this, Jeff. And uh, it's a, it's really, that's why I said, that when, it is, when I first discovered this place, I was like, this is important. 
this is an important plant yeah because of its versatility you know i don't need to know a bunch of techniques with tying moss on the things yeah. to use it some on the wood here too i'm just going to glue it yeah on. it's like too good to be true do you reckon i can smuggle some on the plane oh absolutely like, i may get stuck in customs my right <laughs> it's cool too because it also often has little contaminant strands of moss that will slowly start to grow out of it and if you leave them it becomes this natural texture of the ricardia and its kind of oh, contaminant okay. moss if you want to remove them, it's, it starts out as little strands. It's easy to take them off. Is that where it's, I guess that's where it's grown in the greenhouse and there just happens to yeah. be moss in, in the greenhouse. In some way, I guess, how it's grown and it gets these little contaminants. Another happy little accident. I'm kind of looking to go around these groups, you know, initially. Kind of creating yeah. that little motif around there. Nice. So you won't glue straight away. You just move it I all like around. To them all where I want them to make sure I'm happy with where they're placed, and then I'll go through. I'll start at one end and work to the other, applying the glue. So Jeff is almost done with the greening. That's what we're calling this. Remember, well, that's what Jeff's always called it. It's it's greening. It's a it's a good term. It's it is exactly what it is. <laughs> right, uh, adding the green. Yeah, but we just want to talk over the filter that we're going to be using because. Uh, there's a certain way that Jeff likes to set it up. So what is the filter for a start? I know right. you're so familiar with it, but... Right, this is a Eheim uh, 350, but we just always called it a 2215, just referring to the model number. Yep. So this is the 2215. Now I do have a little hack. Because this is a 90 centimeter tank, it's narrow but long. And so, you know, getting the flow right in there, I find to be a little more important because I want that water to make a nice loop down that full 90 centimeters. So we have a little trick that we learned. So this is the impeller that comes in the 350 or 2215. And this is the one from the 2217 or the Eheim 600. Right. And so they're the same impeller, except this one has those extra fins, yeah. you see. And you pick up a few gallons per hour. Like it does pick up your flow. Uh, a, a pretty, you know, not too much, but it's a nice little boost. And so... We almost always do this on this model, but on that particular dimension of tank, it's, I consider it kind of a must. I'm guessing you can buy these on separately. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Eheim has done that for years. Yeah. You can get practically every part. Individually. In its own pack. Yeah, they, that's kind of been their claim to fame for a long time. So I swap out that impeller. You know, it's a, obviously, it's an extra charge. Yeah. But uh, in this case, it's um, it's just something I consider necessary to get the flow right in there. Will Flo be joining us? Is she come in? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I have to get it in now. I have to. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How I pack the filter for a new freshwater planted aquarium, whether it has soil or no, even if it's going to be uh, with CO2, not CO2. If there's freshwater in plants, and I'm using a canister filter, this is you know, pretty much, or may make a few modifications, but it's pretty much the way I always do it. And so, and I learned this from Mr. Takashi Amano, and I learned this while training at the ADA Gallery in Japan. I made four trips there, and I'm just had the unique privilege, so I do try to, you know, <laughs> practice those very special teachings. So what I've got is just um, some biomedia, yeah. um, and I've got that in its own bag, and it's just a relatively small amount. And I'm gonna put that in the bottom. And then what's going next through most of the space available is carbon, activated carbon or, you know, charcoal, bamboo carbon, bamboo charcoal. We're using, this is a lot too. Yeah. I mean, this is a heavy duty <laughs> amount, okay? And that's gonna take up most of our space in there. This is a one-time thing. I will very, it's very unlikely I would use carbon ever again right. on a freshwater aquarium with plants, but for that first 30 days, approximately, maybe three weeks, maybe six weeks, but somewhere in that range there, yeah. until the first time I clean it, that carbon is, and that volume of carbon is doing a lot to deal with all kinds of excesses of a newly planted or newly greened aquarium. Okay. And especially with soil, so much so, like the carbon is so effective at kind of mitigating some of the excessive you know, things the, the soil is contributing to the water column, that super jet filters from ADA would come with a huge bag. Now they called it anthracite, but just, I believe that's just a form of carbon. It would come with a big bag of that already installed because Amara was assuming you were using a super jet filter to do a soil-based aquascape mm. tank. And so 
you, he didn't want you to have to go buy this large amount of carbon, and so the filter would come with it. But that was as how vital uh, he did. this large volume yeah. of chemical filtration uh, was considered. And so this is something I've always done for years and years and years. Um, and it, I think it's a, it, there's a reason why uh, they do it this way every time for so long. And so, um, you know, I don't always know every last detail of the science. The takeaway is that, you know, Mr. Romano taught me to do it this way. And, and it it's always worked for me. And that's yeah. what I do. Okay. So on top, I'll like a nice amount of just this polymer media that's really good at skimming out uh, organics and again any tans from wood this kind of thing just gonna put a nice polish on the water I use a pretty hefty amount of it uh, after the first time I clean the filter I'll go all biomedia and maybe a little bit more of something for some chemical or organic filtration on top but this is gonna be 90% uh, a biomedia of some kind you know pick your flavor they're 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 all you know good products for for uh, colonizing your good bacteria in the filter so a lot of bio long term but in the sh short term at startup before the plants are growing we're trying to really skim out a lot of the excesses with these medias and help mitigate that algae growth cool and then just a little bit of fill floss on the top for extra extra polish right little mechanical on top and then boom we're pretty much ready to oh, go with oh and these will be using these aren't we as well i am going to use those i oh, have not nice. used these in the gallery in a long long time i love them i love and, to do um I love yeah to do you you actually reminded me <laughs> of the convenience of those and the low maintenance factor i'm like you know yeah. i could use a little bit of maintenance time saving around yeah. here right now i think i'm going to do it they can be orange inside from any kind of algae that's right it doesn't matter <laughs> still looks fantastic yeah you exactly. kind of go with that uh light yeah um, as well yeah it could be kind of a cool look so we finished the greening now haven't we jeff and the uh for the most part for the yeah? most part yeah oh you still got some stuff well, you might want to add or what happens sometimes is after you get it full it just exposes things in a different way uh, okay and so there could be some spots i may still want to add a little something yeah. but for now yes we're good <laughs> so we've stuck the uh ricardia with yes. like a glue underneath just glued the bottom very simple i mean it's got a natural underside from cutting off that mesh yeah. super easy oh so good it looks like uh yeah you know like artificial turf right you get like for a golf green or something it starts like that it does get kind of fluffier and more natural as it grows in but, yeah yeah um, um but yeah i suppose now just filling it up jeff's got the uh the hook which hook <laughs> Cap he's called Captain Hook down yeah, there. We're just running it to the RO bat. Here. Oh, so you're filling it up with RO water as well. Yes. Oh, all the lights are off. Everyone's gone home, but me and me and Jeff are committed. We, we need here. to. Yes. We need to fill it. <laughs> we need to fill it. We need to uh, just attach those uh, filter in filter inlet and outlet. In the morning, we're going to add. In the morning, I'm making waffle. Sorry. <laughs> in the morning, we're going to be adding the fish as well. We don't even know what fish yet, do we? Not just yet. Got to kind of see what's available back there. But I'm sure. We'll see what works. Cool. But Jeff is really good at getting like the fish to work for the skate. So, and the best example of that is that one over there. I have to say, the one with the pinto and the green respora. Just it's just an absolute perfect fish with the white background on it. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. So it's now the next day. The tank is full. It's looking perfect. And uh, Jeff's added a few more details as well. Now, I don't want you to think that all we've done was fill it up with water and it looks this good. Although it's not far off that, is it, Jeff? You know, you've, you've done a few things. It's not like you've had to do an absolute ton of work, but there's still work to be done after the initial fill up, right? That's true, yes. And in this case, when it got full, and this happens to me, you know, quite often. So like this area here underneath that rock was just really, it was just too spare. Like it really needed some other detail down there. So. I played with adding a few small stones, kind of liked it, and yeah. ended up extending that theme around the base of the rock uh, throughout the rest of the tank. Yeah, it just ties it in so good. Yeah, it gave a little detail, gave me a more of a sense of like a little place, yeah. um, and not just a design. So you can see we've got all the lily pipes working still. Um, what Jeff likes to do, do you, do you do it every time at night? Is that right? Or? We do. It's just a routine here that we lift the pipes lift the at pipes. night time. Can you show us? Sure, sure. yeah. So it's really a twofold. Now in this case, this is a uh, stainless steel pipe. And this is a little extra bit here that we attached on from another 
product, but they fit on there and they help give us that aeration action at the surface. So uh, it's really a two-part situation as far as lifting the pipes at night. Uh, we'll go a little higher than that. So one, it's going to eliminate any oily film that you may get, mm. like really effectively. And then two, you are providing extra oxygen when the lights and the CO2 are off. And that's going to benefit, you know, everything that loves oxygen. So, yeah, um, not totally a necessity, but we find it just helps keep thing, things looking a lot nicer. Cool. So I think we're ready. We're ready for fish. Should we go and have a look what you've got? Because not only does ADG have this awesome gallery, all the lights are winding down, but uh, out the back here, there is a full section as well with all the fish to choose from. And here's Corey Hopkins, who's also a retired YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to start filming again, yeah? That's right. Good, good. Are you filming this, Bill? No. Come on! People need to see your stuff. Yeah, so obviously back to your sweat ring. Sell fish. Yep. And um, it's, for us, it's broken up in by region. So this would be all kind of Southeast Asian. Yep. Tropicals here. A lot of rainbows, barbs, anios. Jeff, I need to up my game, don't I? In my studio, I need a section. You, you know, need section, I need like yes. a, like an eight tank section. For sure. Like, don't skate. That's the that's the key. Right. Just don't touch. We've tried it here, but you know, with as many fish as we have coming in and out from a maintenance standpoint, it's easier for us to yeah, keep it real yeah. simple. It makes sense. Yeah. One thing that was coming to mind. We've got some at a really nice size right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's the classic glow light anio. Jeff's really good at looking at a, a fish that go well with the skate. It's not just how the color, it's also the movement, the behavior. I mean, this is kind of a, a, a thinner fish and it's a long tank. Yeah, there's a pretty good amount of flow in there right now too. Yeah. And uh, they're just gonna really like that. Yeah, they'll look gonna really they'll look even better in that tank with that lighting as well. So we've got so we've yeah. got those for definite. And then I made another selection. In this tank here, we've got some pygmy cories. Now, we don't want a huge group. Would you say as well, Jeff? I think like a group yeah. of like eight or something like that. For sure, yeah. Just a little bit of detail on that bottom sand. They're gonna stand out nicely. They'll love the fine sand as well. Just another element to the tank. So you've got the you've got the fun of the uh, glow lights then. And then those are just a cute little little touch, I think. No, it's a great ob. It's not two fish that you'd normally put together, would it? That's what you didn't think initially. Right, I mean, it didn't pop into my head initially, but at your suggestion, I was like, whoa, that'd actually be really cool. And I've been featured a pygmy quarry in the gallery, and I can't remember when, so. Be really I, don't, cool. I don't think there's a person alive who doesn't like a pygmy quarry. Seriously, right? Like, <laughs> too cute. Just exactly. a cool little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so we've got the first fish going in now. We've got the pygmy cories, cuties. They might be a bit shy, we'll see. Oh, they look great under the light, Jeff. They've got like a greeny hint to them. Oh yeah. Like an emerald in that front. Very nice, really cool. And then the stars of the show, we have got the glow light Danny O's. Oh wow. I thought they were gonna look good in this light, but they really do. Yeah, yeah. and they're like settled in, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oh, awesome. As suspected, the glow lights are moving very fast. They're gonna love this flow. Look at them come through the middle there. That was so cool. It's like a figure eight racetrack. And they school really well, they, they always do. And it's not like some fish, when you put them in, they uh, school initially, and then once they get comfortable, they kind of stop. But I've always found the glow lights, they, they keep that going. Look at that. <laughs> just bulldozing through all the pygmy cories. I just said to Jeff that I have to, after I put the fish in, I like to really sort of concentrate on what they're doing. Pygmy's hanging out with the chop race for a minute there. The yeah, yeah. Lights, they're just kind of swooping together. Yeah. <laughs> we're friends, we're friends. Look at that when they come through the middle like that. That is so cool, that middle section. They love it. They're literally schooling. <laughs> they're just confused. It's a bit of a shock. That's so cool. I love that. Now, I mean, initially, I'm sure Jeff will admit he didn't escape that thinking the fish would keep doing a figure eight pattern. I really did. It's a, uh, <laughs> it's a happy cool little accident. Yeah, cool bonus. I think that fish was the perfect call for the tag. Yeah. Definitely, look at that. Oh, so cool. I want it. Can I, can I take the whole thing back with me? <laughs> That's really their pattern now. Yeah, figure eight. 
until one of them at the front ruins it and goes back around the loop. Right. <laughs> There's always going to be one guy. We love it. Really good job, Jeff. Thank you.